The first step in preparing um, an animated GIF is to think about your graphic and how the graphic itself would have animation. So in the case of the soda jerk, he's going to be probably tossing the ice cream from his right hand to his left hand. Um, and so I would need to prepare the original graphic. Um, so the original graphic looked something like this. Let's zoom way out. Looks something like that. Um, and uh, what I would need to do is kind of eliminate the ice cream that's midair in the original still and then um, also find a little scoop of ice cream without the motion blur so it's a little easier to read um, and then organize my timeline. So I'll do the repairs I'm just going to showcase because repairs are covered in a different chapter um, but I would need to sort of recover an eye. Um, let me zoom in on that a little bit and the great thing about animated GIFs is that it's such a such a sort of um, kind of low form of aesthetic um, <laughs> reproduction that it, it really is okay if it's kind of crappy looking. And I don't really mean that in the way it sounds, but pixelization and uh, sort of the nuances of um, tonal scale are sort of lost in an animated gift anyhow, so you can be a little bit sloppy. So here's uh, basically a copy of half of an eye that's pasted and flipped, and then some repairs. This is a quick demo file, so I didn't even name my layers. Um, and this isn't really a great repair, but it's going to work in terms of just being a, a platform for the animated GIF. Now in the actual animated file, um, I have those repairs in place. And then I have a scoop of ice cream that I found uh, licensed freely that I'm using. Um, and you can see if I turn off my um, layer mask, so again, shift the shift key and click on the mask itself to turn the mask off. So if I disable the layer mask, you can see there's a scoop of ice cream that I had selected out. There's my mask to keep it in the uh, scooper. And if I show my timeline, this is, I guess, the most fun part of the animated GIF, you can see how I've constructed my GIF. So essentially, um, if you view your timeline, you initially will have nothing there, um, but you can add frames and you can use the side menu to make new frames and in your new frames you basically can just show uh, or, or move or activate whichever layer you want so um, you basically tell Photoshop in each new frame which layer to show and that um, suggests the animation so in frame 1 I show this layer in frame 2 I show Ice Cream 02 in frame 3 I show Ice Cream 03 it's basically wherever the eyeball is. In frame 4, I'm showing Ice Cream 04, and in frame 5, Ice Cream 05. So that when I play my GIF, um, it will kind of look like the ice cream is flying from his right hand to his left hand. Um, I can also indicate in the timeline how long the animation remains on any given frame. So in this case, I just left all of them at zero seconds, but if you had something where you wanted to show uh, a pause or something that sort of slows down or starts up, you could, you could um, sort of indicate that by changing the amount of time that each frame takes. Um, remember that every time you add a frame, you're going to be adding to your file size. So you, you, know, you probably don't want these to be enormous unless, you're, unless the point of it is, you know, has nothing to do with file size, right? So if you don't care if someone has to wait a while, you can have as many frames as you want. Once you've built out your timeline, um, then you can go ahead and do a file save for web. And um, the main thing here is that you're going to choose GIF because GIF is the format that will allow you to see that animation. And um, when you choose GIF, you, you can choose from one of these palettes. Um, it's really just a matter of, of looking, you know, choosing the different palettes and looking at what your image looks like. Um, I feel like I when I and I don't save GIFs really all that frequently but I feel like when I do I usually am using the selective palette for whatever reason um, no dither dithering is gonna uh, be a sort of uh, dithering is a way of for Photoshop to try to compensate for colors that aren't necessarily there and and when you include dithering you usually end up with a, a little bit of a pixelization or a pattern dot pattern um, that we typically don't want to see um, in this case I don't need transparency uh, I'm going to go ahead and check interlace so that it starts to download as quickly as possible. Um, I certainly want all 256 colors in this example of an animated GIF. Um, so with all of that in mind, I would go ahead and save this. Um, and then when I save it as an animated GIF, 
or I should say when I save it as a GIF, I'll see in my results folder in the images file. Um, I'm going to have, I'm actually going to go ahead and, sorry about that, I'm going to show that in my four, chapter 14 folder. So in my results folder, in my images file, I'm going to see um, the GIF here. Um, so if I would open the GIF just in an application like preview, I would see what my frames look like one at a time. And if I opened that same um, GIF in a web browser, I would see the animation take place.